This is Gizmo. Everybody say hi, Gizmo. Hi. He's an adorable burrowing owl. Now, like I said, we do have a breed and release program here, and a lot of animals are born and raised and released on property. But that's only if they pass a certain amount of tests. So uh, he actually did not pass his tests. He's a very human imprinted animal. So his parents are in that enclosure right over there. And it is uh, very rare for us to have a clutch of fertile burrowing owls. So in the past 20 years, we have only been able to successfully raise and release 19 burrowing owls. So when we do have a fertile clutch, we are very excited. We want it to be as wild as possible so that we can release them. Let me shoot this little butt over here. There we go. Perfect. All right. So. Uh, we try to make them as wild as possible. So with this clutch of eggs that we had last year, they were very hands off. We wanted the parents to raise them, incubate them, whatever they needed to do. So one day we just peeked in to see how they were doing. There was a snake eating all of the eggs, except for one egg that was left and that was his egg. So we took it and we incubated it and he hatched and we tried to introduce him back to his parents. But at that point his parents said, he's your problem. He's not our problem anymore. You hatched him, you raise him. So we said, that's fine. We, we're rehabbers, we know what we're doing. So we paired him up with a small baby eastern screech owl. So usually when we have baby birds that we're trying to release later on, we pair them up with other babies so that they can uh, be able to learn from each other. Well, these two did not learn from each other at all. They are very bad students. They just kind of fed off of each other's poor, poor students' uh, work habits. And uh, they, they just didn't learn. They, they didn't pass any other tests. They don't know how to hunt for themselves, make a home for themselves how to do uh, long flights or anything that they need to do to be able to survive. So that is why he is here. He's very cuddly, which is great for being an ambassador, but not so great for being a wild animal. So that is why Gizmo is here. Now he's a burrowing owl. This is a keystone species here in Florida. Keystone meaning that they do stuff in the environment that actually helps the entire ecosystem. So they will find burrows and they'll dig them out uh, and maintain them. And that is actually going to act as shelter for other animals when there's a natural disaster. So if there's less of these guys, there's less shelter for other animals, and uh, that overall is just very detrimental to the ecosystem. So we like having these guys around because they help us a lot. They also really do impact the cockroach population because they love eating cockroaches. So less of these guys means more cockroaches in general. Now, owls are super amazing animals. You can see he's got these yellowish green eyes and that tells us that he's a crepuscular hunter, meaning that he's up in the morning and the evening. He's not nocturnal. If he were nocturnal, he would have completely dark eyes. But since he's got those colorful eyes, that tells us he is up at dawn and dusk and pretty much whenever he wants to be up. But those eyes are very highly specialized. They are like a cone extending back into the skull so that they can catch all the light and all the motion that they possibly can. What that also means, because of that weird shape, they cannot move their eyes in their sockets. You'll notice that when he's moving his eye, his head around, he cannot move his eyes. So when he's looking anywhere, he needs to move his head because of that weird shape. So these guys have to do a 270 degree turn with their head in either direction to be able to compensate for not being able to move those eyes. That's not a full 360, it's not all the way around, but it is still a three quarter way turn. It's still quite a bit more than what we can do. Now, these guys also have very incredible hearing. All owls will have facial discs. Uh, the feather pattern on their face also helps to funnel in sound into their ears like a satellite dish. And their ears are asymmetrically placed. One is up by the eye and the other one is down by the beak so that it catches all levels of sound and they can more easily triangulate where their prey is. So their hearing is also very sensitive. And when they do find their prey, they are going to want to catch it with those really cool feet. These guys have zygodactyl talon placement. So that means they've got two toes in the front and two toes in the back. That's unique to owls when it comes to birds of prey. So other birds of prey are going to have three toes in the front and one toe in the back. And we'll talk about that a little bit later with our next guest. But this is important because this makes owls the strongest of the birds of prey. It's an equal dispersal of the pressure all the way around uh, when they are squeezing down on their prey. So if you squeeze your fist as tight as you could, you would exert a force of 50 to 70 pounds of pressure per square inch. This guy easily can do 100 pounds of pressure per square inch. So that is the difference of the zygodactyl talon placement. Now the last thing I'm going to talk about with him are his cool feathers. This helps him to camouflage. But owls in general have very silent flights because their primary feathers, the first and longest feather on their wing, 
is going to have a comb-like structure, so it breaks up the air. So they actually have almost completely silent flight. So they are very good at sneaking up on their prey. Now Gizmo's telling me he wants to go back inside. So everybody say bye, Gizmo. Bye. All right, we're gonna get our next.